Hello, welcome, Tone here, and today we are going to be taking a blind look at Rift Wizard. This game's been getting a lot of attention lately. I've been seeing discussions on Reddit and the Roblox Discord and other places, uh, which is excellent to see because it's a new game by a new developer, and it's always great to see um, those kind of things getting attention in the Roblox community. It's always get, good to see some fresh games and all that. Um, so Rift Wizard, I'm just going to read the description from the Steam page. It says, Rift Wizard is a tough-as-nails fantasy roguelike featuring challenging turn-based combat and deep open-ended character building. Craft your spellbook from over 100 unique spells and abilities and fight your way through a series of procedurally generated challenges to defeat your nemesis. So my impression of the game, just based on looking at the Steam page, basically the trailer and the images there, um, is that there's like a lot of enemies on the screen and that first inclination to me was that the game's probably a bit puzzly and outside of that the other thing that was very notable uh, to me by looking at just like the the gameplay images is that there's no field of view it looks like you have knowledge of the entire map you're on um, and you know with the position of all the enemies and all that which kind of leads to that impression for me as well um, so it'll be interesting to check this out with you all. Full disclosure, I actually tried recording this last weekend and I had a power outage and it failed and my video got corrupted. So I actually have played the first few floors. Um, I got up to level three, so I didn't play that much. Um, but I did try doing this before, so some of the early game stuff and me learning the controls um, will actually just be able to breeze through. So. Not completely blind, I guess, but we'll quickly get into an area where I have zero knowledge about the game. Um, another, let me scroll through this Steam page a little bit. I think there was something else that caught my eye on here. Oh yeah, it's still in early access. It released earlier this month. Um, so it's important to note they're going to be improving the game and adding to it. And hopefully taking some player feedback and uh, just making some good improvements. Something else that's uh, very stand out to me is that the I really like the aesthetic of the game. It's got pixel art, as you can see from the the title screen here. But you'll also see once you get into the game. And it's funny. I, the the word that sprung to mind to me is it's very crisp. Um, there's a, a great like contrast between everything. Good use of colors and everything like that to just make everything very distinct. And um, one of the features that they they list on the Steam is crisp 1990s retro RPG aesthetic. So it's funny that they use that same exact word. But yeah, the other features they mention are open-ended character advancement with deep synergies and spell interactions, a huge library of spells and passive skills to build from, low randomness, high player agency, diverse and varied monster design, high difficulty, permadeath, limited resources. So those are all things that I really appreciate in a game. So it'll be great to see how well that's all implemented in Rift Wizard. And just one more thing that um, caught an eye for me on the Steam page is the author's statement. And they say Rift Wizard is inspired by classics such as NetHack, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, Brogue, and Tales of Mijal. Um, Tome, I've actually never tried to pronounce that, so I think I did pretty well there. Um, but pushes the genre in a more strategic, combat-focused direction. In some ways, it is closer to a board game than an RPG. And that point right there, um, I think, kind of speaks to what I was seeing earlier, about it being a little more um, puzzly, tactics-based, and being able to see the whole field. So... Um, Seems like that is the case here, and part part of the intention. There isn't much plot or exploration in Rift Wizard, just epic wizard battles and deep buildcraft from start to finish, and that sounds great. They also say, I am creating with Rift Wizard because I want to push the boundaries of the genre. I want to build a deep and challenging roguelike worth exploring for a thousand hours or more. A game with hundreds of potential strategies to try. A game where each run is novel, exciting, and intellectual challenge. A game that inspires the player to be crafty, creative, and brilliant. And those are all features that I, that's why I play games like this, a lot of these traditional roguelikes, just roguelikes in general. So it seems like the developer has all his priorities right there and their intentions of making this game. So I'm really excited to see how uh, they pull it off. So let's go ahead and check out Rift Wizard. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, there's a how to play thing here. Let me skim through this again. 
Finish 24 levels and kill Mordred to win the game. Destroy all enemies to finish a level. The Steam page actually said 25 levels, so I don't know if Mordred, the boss, is a uh, an extra level they were counting. After completing a level, walk into a rift to peek inside. Teleport through the rift by clicking any empty tile or abort the teleport using escape. After you teleport into a level, you cannot leave until it is finished. Teleport with care. Um, so we get to pick different levels to go to. Um, so there's a little bit of strategic decision making there. Spells and passive skills can all, um, all be purchased. Oh, is there a typo there or did I just bad English? Spells and passive skills can all purchased. Yeah, I think they're missing a word. The skill points, um, SP from the character sheet. Spells can be individually upgraded from the character sheet using SP and at shrines found in the world. Skill points are very limited, spend with care. Um, so we see that we already have a, a resource um, here in skill points, which we have to play around and spend around and not waste. Um, spells have limited charges, casting a spell. There's another resource, charges. Spells have limited charges, casting a spell costs one charge from that spell. Regain charges by drinking mana potions. Mana potions are very limited, cast with care. Um, and I'll probably have to reference this throughout the game to regain my knowledge of the controls. We have character sheet, learn spells, learn skills. Left click, uh, move or cast currently selected spell at the cursor's position. Right click, cancel current spell. All right, left, right click, that's great stuff. Five weights, numpad. Um, so the, the number row, shift and alt keys. Oh man, I've got a, a thunderstorm outside. You may hear that <laughs> throughout this recording. Um, I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but I, when I've been streaming in the past, um, people have definitely <laughs> heard that. So that's what's going on um, outside of my building, if you do uh, hear that. Um, yeah, so we can select cast spells with the number row. Um, shift will go 11 to 20, and Alt will use items. All right, cool. I wonder if you can hold more than 10 items if we have limited inventory. Advanced controls. Control is show line of sight, tab is next target, and alt is show threatened tiles. B is look, W is walk, A is auto pickup after clearing the level. Shift up or down on the character sheet, select, change selected spell hotkey. Alright, cool. Um, and I, as I said, I, I played to level 3. Um, and then my power cut out, so I think this returns us there. Uh, we're just going to start a new game. I wanted to uh, show it off from the beginning. Welcome back, wizard, to the ruins of the universe. Aeons pass while you slumbered. You have slept walk across many worlds. The universe, once ordered and beautiful, lies in chaos and ruin, and you as well. You were a great wizard once, but your magic and your memories have faded. Your purpose you remember, revenge. The dark wizard Mordred is nearby. Perhaps he is what woke you? Regain your power and slay Mordred. All right. Pretty simple premise there. I like it. Let's get right into the game. Um, just like a classic roguelike <laughs> tends to be. All right, so this is our map. We've got 50 HP, one spell point, or skill point um, to spend. We are in Realm 1, so I guess that's 1 of 24. It's no spells. We have items, a healing potion. Ah, yeah, I like this UI. So you have character stuff on the left. Um, information on the right and then the map in the middle very effective so healing potion restores our health to full mana refresh charges all of our spells teleport anywhere on the map once that seems like a great resource menu how to play this is interesting how to play was a question mark on the how to play screen but it's h here yeah that question mark doesn't work so this needs to get updated Our character sheet, so we can learn new spells or learn new skills. So you actually have access to everything from the get-go, which is kind of overwhelming, and I'm not going to try and read everything, but we can see that there is a spell, um, like elements or class system, fire, lightning, arcane, conjuration, all that good stuff. Um, and I guess it looks like every spell falls into multiple classes. Oh, maybe not this one. Mystic Memory has one, but most of them multiple classes. And I assume there's going to be some synergies, maybe weaknesses and resistances from enemies. 
Um, different stuff like that going on, so that'll be ex exciting to explore. What about the skills? Alright, so this is the cost, I believe. So we can't start with any skills, but like, let's just pick a random one. Bone Guard. Start each level company by four friendly Bone Guards. Or Void Lord. Level 7. Arcane spells gain 2 max charges, 8 damage, 2 range. So, different like augmentations or abilities that aren't like active, it seems. So, kind of like passive things. Alright, so spells. We have the cho choice between Death Bolt, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, Magic Missile, or Wolf. We look at the right, Death Bolt, Dark, Sorcerer, and Conjuration Magic. I wonder if there's a benefit to... To maximizing the number of schools your spell is in. It probably has pros and cons, I'm sure, if there's like a weakness and resistance system. Let's see, deals dark damage to one target. Slain units are raised as skeletons. 13 charges, range 8, 9 damage, and minion damage is 5. So that's pretty cool. No wonder that has 3 schools, because yeah, that's got some conjuration and, and stuff going on there. It's like necromancy and direct damage. Fireball, deal fire damage to units in an area. Radius 2. 16 charges, 8 damage. That gives us like an AoE effect. Lightning Bolt. Deal lightning damage to all units in a beam. Range 10, damage 12. More damage. Um, decent charges it looks like. Oh look, it has upgrades on the bottom. So those are things that we can upgrade as we go through. Then Wolf. Level 1, summon a wolf. It's got its own health and damage. Cool. Well, I'm going to go with um, Lightning Bolt, because I think... I don't know, between Fireball and Lightning Bolt, I think we can take advantage of just playing tactically and getting very efficient use out of abilities like that that can affect more than one enemy. Although Death Bolt kind of helps you with that too. You get a, an ally, which is probably going to give you some form of crowd control, help do damage. Um, oh, did I even read Magic Missile? Deal... Arcane damage to one target. So that's about the same damage. Eh, it's pretty high. 30 charges is impressive and 14 range. Hmm. That's an interesting choice as well. I wonder, I wonder if you can get some cool like augmentations to that with the, the skill system or not. And we actually have access to all of these spells. So we just don't have the points to spend on them, which is interesting. So yeah, it's a little overwhelming having access to all this stuff. Um, it's an interesting design choice as well. Because I don't know... You have to like... I imagine it's pretty tough to balance this many spells. Um, and usually you kind of get around that in a, a game like this by only giving you access to spells at random by maybe finding a spell book or something and then just working with you get. So having everything available to you at the get-go and just being able to build around that is a interesting direction and i guess that kind of makes the strategic decision making kind of fall into the the game world and making sure with your knowledge of the game world that you're picking the right abilities from these lists um but yeah let's just go with lightning bolt for now kind of like the idea of that um, so we have lightning bolt now uh, five upgrades available Cool, so we can upgrade damage, range, max charges, wall penetration, and channeling. It becomes a channeled spell. I don't know what that means. And oh, these are pretty big upgrades. It's like double damage, a lot of extra range, like double charges. It might be doubles all around. Um, but they cost skill points we don't have. So I guess instead of picking up something new, we can upgrade what we already have. It'll be interesting to see what is stronger out of those. But yeah, let's get into the actual gameplay here. Uh, and yeah, this is kind of what I was saying. I really like how the maps are designed, how the enemies are, the use of color, and just contrast between everything. I think it's really effective. We have a bat, 4 HP. Um, these have their own properties. This is living in dark. We probably have spells that do more damage to different types or something, or maybe only affect certain things. Um, it does 2 damage to us. It's flying. We have goblin, 7 HP, living, 2 physical damage. Uh, memory orbs grant one skill point. Here are the rifts. Destroy all enemies and layers to unlock. Oh, and it tells us what's inside of danger. Goblins, spark imps, contains um, 
nature spell upgrades, nature spells. We have a goblin lair. It resists poison. It spawns a goblin every seven to ten turns. Okay, so we don't get to pick our position right now. I think we want to blast this lair. All right, so we have lightning bolt. Cool, so we can see our range. Oh, actually, let's look at the this. So control shows line of sight. Alt shows threaten, ta uh, threaten tiles. Oh, it's based on where my, my mouse is. Okay, I was like, that, like this line of sight didn't make sense. And here's the tiles where we can take damage. Cool. So I like features like that, um, especially something like this. If the map gets crowded, it gives you like a really good idea of the very intuitive look at the game space you're playing around. All right, I think we want to try and kill this lair before it spits out a goblin. Looks like I'm just out of range to be able to hit it. I'm still out of range. Seems like the keyboard works pretty well in this game too. Okay, looks like I can hit that. Let's blast it. Nice. Okay, so we don't have to worry about more goblins. And it doesn't look like we'll be able to get any... Like, lining up any enemies very easily. Maybe? Maybe if I lured some people in here, maybe we can save some charges? Let's see what happens. Um, no, I'm just gonna get hit by something, so let's not use HP. I don't know how important that is yet. But maybe I can line these guys up. Cool. Yeah, that's why I took Lightning Bolt, because I th thought maybe we'd be able to take advantage of stuff like that. So now our, our rifts are, are glowing. Pick these up, and there was an auto pickup command. Oh, he actually walks around. Seems unnecessary, since I assume there's no threats here. I don't know if some maps maybe have environmental dangers later, where you can actually get hurt here, and that's important. Or um, how that works. Alright, so we have a couple of rifts. There's a bog art. So I have goblins and layers. One has boggarts, mantises, and spark imps. And then this one has increased dura duration range or max charges um, for spell type, arcane and holy. There's a dice there, and I think some potions. Yeah, so it's just showing us all the items that are here. Roll the dice to deal 666 dark damage to six random enemies. Holy crap, that sounds good. Does that just like instantly kill six guys? <laughs> um, this is the sh okay, it's a shrine. Okay, so for certain spell types, we can increase. We get an upgrade. Nice. Cool, we can hover over the guys here. So the bog arts are the new character or the new monster type in here. Looks like some kind of eh, it's not a goblin, some guy with a, a pink sword. Six HP, one shield. I wonder what shield does. Living nature arcane. 75 resist arcane. It's four damage. Melee. And we can check out all the portals. Oh, what did this one have from the outside? Nature spell, spell upgrades, and passive skills are one skill point cheaper here. I'll go back in. There we go. Nature circle. So that seems pretty cool. If we want to pick up some nature stuff or upgrade some nature spells, we can go there and save skill points. Which seems kind of rare. I'm, I don't know if this changes, but it seems like so far we get three skill points per floor. So I don't know if you can start getting more later or how that works. I mean, this one has Spark Imps, Demon and Lightning. And um, they have a ranged attack. 75 resist lightning, so we probably don't want to go to this one. There's a Fire Shield, increased resistance to fire damage by 100% for 25 turns. That's cool. What is this? Boss Goblin, 42 HP, 9 physical damage. Wow, nice. 
There's two layers here. And what about this one? Conjuration spells, spell upgrades, and skills are cheaper here. What did this one give? If you have arcane or holy spells, we can upgrade them for free, I presume. This has a mantis. Some kind of cracked shield? What is that? Portal disruptor. Change the destination of all portals on the current level. Hmm, so you can re-roll the portals, I guess? That sounds pretty strong as well. Possibly stronger than the Dark Dice, maybe in the early game. You can start getting favorable, I don't know, these circles and, and like loadouts and maybe um, snowball from there. And uh, we're the Mantis. Living, three physical damage. Pounce. Three physical damage, four range leap attack. So I guess he jumps into you. Yeah, look at the range of his pounce. Neat. And then this one has the Conjuration Circle. Conjuration spells, spell upgrades, and passive skills are one skill point cheaper here. Well, we don't have Arcane or Holy Spells, so I think we... And we don't want to go to the Spark Imp. So I'm leading here, and maybe we'll pick up a Conjuration spell. And Conjuration in most games is like... Like throwing Arcane Magic at stuff, right? So... Or no, Conjuration in this game seems to be generating... Oh, it's it's um, like allies. Okay. So like the Wolf is a Conjuration spell. Got it. Hmm. And this has... This doesn't have the dice. No, this has the, the Rift Reroller. Okay, we can do this. And we got three skill points now. We pick up another skill where we can upgrade our Lightning Bolt. I think we want to save our skill points for that, that circle. Uh, we can upgrade Lightning Bolt though. Let's see, let's see how we do here. But, uh, yeah, let's take this one. And now I can place myself anywhere I want. I couldn't do that the last one. So I can place myself somewhere we can take advantage of our spells like Lightning Bolt. So I think like long, like right here seems like a pretty like strong place where things have to approach me through these long corridors. Um, or just like generally down here. A really long corridor. And we have three layers. So generate or spawning next to a layer is probably pretty good. So you can like take one of those out early. Or taking two out down here. I'll spawn down here. I'll try to take out both of these layers and then we can like come back here and maybe get a lot of value out of our lightning bolts. So I wonder what key... I wonder how close I have to get to be able to so from this distance, I can blast this. I think I want to spawn right here. We can just take out both of these right away at the beginning. Let's try it. Okay, so our lightning bolt did not recharge. So we have nine charges. We're going to have to either upgrade the charges on that or use the mana potion. Or pick up another spell at some point here. But I still think I want to try and save skill points to take advantage of this Conjuration Circle. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's uh, start with what we got here. Alright, well we got to take out this Goblin, so I'm going to do this first. And then I think it will be advantageous to destroy this first, so I can start backing up away from this guy. And maybe we can kill him and the... The goblin lair all at once. Nice. Alright, I got five charges of lightning bolt left. Uh, lightning bolt also kills this guy instantly. That is great. Um, I may as well just kill him. I mean, he's gonna get to me before anyone else gets in our range. Yes, all these guys are funneling into my trap.
All right, we're about to get pincered here. I think I want to take out the guy on the left and get as many of these guys up into this tier. I don't know if this is a coincidence or if they're intentionally trying to stay out of my my range here. I can zap four of them right now. Imagine after one move, one more guy is going to move up here. I think I'm going to keep moving left as much as I can until I can blast this guy. Which is going to put these guys in range of me. And then I'm going to blast the guys to the, the right. Okay, so I imagine if I move left now, I'll get attacked. There's a threatened tile. Let's blast him. Now we gotta hit the guys to the right. Oh, we got the boss goblin here too. He's gonna take multiple hits. We do 12 damage, I have to hit him three more times. I have just enough tiles to kill him before he can hit me for nine physical damage. Um, but only two charges left on my lightning bolt. I think we want to go in and upgrade that. Let's give it more charges. That costs us two of our skill points. Are they skill points or spell points? Skill points, okay. Making sure I'm saying that right. And that actually didn't replenish our charges. So we're gonna have to use a potion. And the big question is if the potion costs a turn to consume, we may get hit by this guy after all. Could perhaps avoid that by increasing the damage of our lightning bolt. Save nine HP damage. Nope, I don't have I don't got the cash for that anymore. Alright, well, we are going to find out how that works. Um, I guess I want to lure more goblins in, though. Whoops, I'm going to keep doing that. I guess escape takes you back to the options screen. It's also what I'm using to, like, clear things out. This guy's getting close to me. He's, what, one, two, three tiles away? We just go for this shot. These are both two tiles away, so I'm gonna hit, get hit by one no matter what. I wonder if it pays off for me to back up into here. I think it does actually. I move here, he moves there, I move down. Let's do that. Oh, I still have to hit the, goss the boss goblin twice, though. I think I'm going to use my mana potion in case it costs a turn. And here's why. If I blast this guy, the boss goblin moves up here. And if using the mana potion costs a turn, then he moves here and gets a hit on me. If I use it now... I guess it doesn't change. I was thinking maybe the goblin would do damage to me instead, and I could take two instead of nine damage. But I think this guy's going to hit me no matter what if that does cost a turn. Oh, you know what the benefit is, though? I can hit both of them at once. If I use the mana potion now, which I think does save me from the boss goblin. So let's do that. And it does cost a turn, so it's a good thing that we did that. Um, and we have 26 charges now, so that upgrade... I think that was uh, worthwhile to do that before using the potion. So blast them. Blast him. Sweet, no damage. I wonder if I can destroy... Potions. Nope, that's good. Assuming they can't pounce through enemies. It's hard to tell. It doesn't look like it, though. Okay, well, this guy's not going to catch up to our range, so... Do that. Cool, we cleared out most of the level. Um, it looks like it's mostly guys coming from this goblin lair, which is going to generate a lot of goblins by the time we get up there. 
Now I'm wondering how we can get up there, destroy that, and then clear the rest of the goblins without using a ton of charges. If I can get up here and like maybe lure these guys around, I can probably like lure them and use less to kill all of them. If I go this way, this guy's gonna catch up to me. If I go any other way, I have to hit one of these guys. And this is gonna spawn, I mean, it's a long walk. This might spawn like three goblins. It's a seven to 10 turns. Yeah, like probably two to three goblins by the time I get up there. Kind of looking at this as like a way to kind of shake a goblin. I imagine if I go this way, this guy might catch up to me anyways. I'm going to start walking this way. No, he's going the other way. Okay, this might work after all. Now there's a goblin here. I'm gonna have to hit the guy behind me no matter what. This is about to spawn another goblin as well. Returns. Hmm. I get into a position where I can hit the goblin that it spawns and the, t the lair. One, two, three. Goblin spawns. One, two. Let's give it a try. Nice. Now I have to deal with this guy. Who's gonna hit me either this turn or next turn if I don't just spend resources on him. I'm wondering, hell yeah. I'm drawing the lightning bolt. All right, four turns the goblin spawn. Ooh, spooky. Ten turns the goblin spawn. That was interesting, this guy went up. Alright, I want to see if I can kill all these guys in the lair in one hit. Where's the furthest I can go and still see the lair? Wait, I apparently can't see the lair from here. But I actually can. That's interesting. This field of view doesn't have it highlighted, though. Not until I get up here. So this field of view is actually different than what my spell can actually hit. That's not good, I don't think. It'd be, it'd be nice to see, be able to tell where my spells could hit when I'm not standing in a place I'm planning around. Which is what I thought this would be for. This feels kind of useless. If I if it doesn't do that, maybe some maybe lightning bolt is more forgiving with where it can like arc around corners and stuff. Um, something definitely kind of weird with that. I'm wondering how far I can back up and still hit this guy though. I'm gonna try one more tile. You know what? I either hit this now and then have to spend another charge on this guy. Or I lure all these guys down and hit all four at once for one charge. But if that puts me out of range, because I have to keep backing up to not get hit by this guy, then I end up using two charges anyways. Just kill these three and then this one separately, as long as I do it before it spawns another guy. So let's just do this. I can still hit that. That's so weird. This field of view is, um, I don't know. Something's off with it. Cool. So we used how many charges here? Uh, we started with nine on the floor, and then I used another nine, it looks like, so like 18 charges to clear the whole floor. We spent two skill points. I feel pretty good about that. I don't, 
I don't have the experience to know if it is good or not, but I, I feel like we played that really well um, with the skills we had. Um, we only spent two skill points on this floor, or after the last floor. Then we can go to this thing, and I guess we're going to check out some conjuration spells. So we use, oh, I guess we just um, go to our char character screen here. Okay, so the the level one or the one cost spells don't get cheaper, and I mean that's good because otherwise you get a bunch of free spells. And it looks like everything that's affecting is getting highlighted in the conjuration color. We could get some like expensive <laughs> spells here, like a level five spell, searing orb. Create a slow-moving steering orb traveling towards the target. Each turn, the orb deals one-fifth damage to all units in the line of sight. Upon reaching its destination or colliding with a unit or wall, the orb explodes, dealing full damage to all units in an area. Four charges. I think we want to get something lower level and then upgrade it. And if the upgrades are cheaper too, which I think it said they are... Yeah. So I think we can get like... So if we buy one level 5 spell, we save one skill point. If I buy a level 3 spell, it costs 2, and get two 2 cost upgrades, then they cost 1 each. We're saving 3 skill points. That seems like value. I'm going to try and do something lower level like that. So our options are Hungry Maw. Summon a Hungry Maw. The Hungry Maw is stationary and has a ranged physical attack that pulls enemies towards it. So they have a duration of 15, they do 9 damage, have 8 health, and 7 range. We have Toxic Spores, uh, summons a Mush Boom. Mush Booms have ranged poison attacks and poison nearby units when they die. They do 1 damage, have 11 health. So I guess those kind of soak up damage, or yeah, because of their health. And then I don't know how poison works, but... They poison things, so... That, I don't know. That is what it is. I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, Choir of Angels, Holy and Conjuration. Um, this is level 3 now. Temporarily summon several angelic singers. The angel singing affects all units in a radius around them. Living and holy units are healed. Dark, undead, and demons take fire and holy damage. Well, we've mostly... I think everything we've fought has been living, so we don't want to heal our enemies. So that seems like a no-go. Earth and Sentinel, level 3, temporarily summon an Earth Elemental. The Elemental is stationary. It has resistance to physical fire and lightning damage. And physical is probably what everything's doing right now. 20 damage and 120 minion health. That seems pretty sweet. Um, Fey Court, summon, temporarily summon several fairies. They heal allies and have ranged attacks. I guess if they heal each other, that works, but we don't have many other allies for them to heal, so probably a little bit of synergy that we're not taking advantage of by using this. They only do 4 damage, 4 range. Summons 4 of them, though. Interesting. Ghost Ball. Temporarily summon Ghost in each empty tile in an area. I mean, looks like it's range 5. Ghosts have physical immunity, teleport frequently, and deal dark damage. Deal dark damage to the enemy units blocking the ghost spawns. Oh, so you do straight up damage if you like center it on an enemy instead of getting the spawn. They only do one damage. The spell does 11 by itself. Giant bear, that sounds cool. 10 damage, 65 health. 3 charges, that's not a lot. We can upgrade... Health damage, charges, and attacks. And glass orb creates a slow-moving orb of aethery glass traveling towards the target. Each turn, the orb glassifies enemies in the radius. Whoops. Whatever glassifying does. Upon reaching its destination or colliding with a unit or wall, the orb shatters, dealing physical damage in the radius. 26 damage. Woo. Only four charges, though, and it doesn't have a charge upgrade. So I don't like that because we, we can't like 
lean into that alone. We'd have to have other supporting spells and use that for like big nasty stuff. I'm leaning towards the bear and the sentinel. Those things sound cool. This has number of mushrooms and gray mushroom upgrades. So we can take one of these and like do hella upgrades on it probably. Sentinel does 20 damage and is a tank. Seven charges. The bear only has three charges, but we can upgrade them. It's 10 damage and 65 health. It, it can like probably move, which is nice. But I think with good positioning, we can maybe take advantage of the Sentinel. I'm going to try the Sentinel. This is going to cost us two skill points instead of three. And let's see what kind of upgrades. We have two left. Um, too bad. Okay, so there's... We can only get one upgrade. It's too bad, because if there were two um, one cost upgrades, I would have taken both of them. So we're going to upgrade damage. I believe it goes from 20 to 15, if my memory serves. Or health. Wow. It goes from 120 to 200, I guess. Um, so damage doesn't seem huge yet. Everything we've been dealing with has been low health. Or low, yeah, low health. Um, health, everything we've been dealing with has been relatively low damage. And I think this has a, a duration on the, the summon. So I don't think we're even going to get close to going through his health. And attack seems really effective because we can split that damage up to multiple sources. Or the same source, I guess. If it'll attack two different enemies or the same one twice. It actually adds more damage than this does. If it gives 20 damage twice. I'm going to go with the attacks. That was the cheaper one. There's nothing else I can do. Nothing with Lightning Bolt. So I can take one of these level 1 spells. The Hungry Maw is stationary and has ranged physical attack that pulls enemies towards it. Or the, the Mush Booms. This is like interesting crowd control if it like pulls enemies away from us into it. Only range seven though, so it's not like I can like throw it like way behind some enemies. You know what? I'm gonna tr check out the toxic spore, see how good poison is, and it has 16 charges, which is um, tantalizing. Charges. It seems like really good to have spells with a lot of charges, so you don't have to use as many healing or mana potions. All right, let's give that a try. What are the upgrades here? Increase Toxic Spore, summons by two. Summon gray mushrooms instead of green, which applies stun instead of poison. Ooh, that sounds cool. Too bad I don't have um, skill points to, to upgrade that here. It's currently only summons one. I guess you want to get it killed? I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how we play around that, or maybe you just have to summon a bunch of them. All right, cool. Um, and we kind of dove deep into these i'm not going to read through all this stuff i'll probably start taking like the first one that sounds interesting so we can speed through this i really wanted to check out the death of the game at the beginning here in particular all right so we have some uh what do we pick up here we have the portal disruptor so we can change the destinations if we would like so first riff we have fire bombers fire bomber layers and gray mush booms hey i can actually i can only summon the green ones um and we have a increase it looks like an upgrade thing we can do for the enchantment spells which we don't have any yet. We have Void Bombers, Void Bomber Layers, and Orcs. So Bomber is just like a spell school or element type of enemy. And they're probably suicidal, I would assume. Um, and there's a upgrade thing for Dark Spells and a ton of items. Wow. What do the clocks do? Stop all enemy units for 10 turns. That sounds cool. And that dice, which uh, we were eyeing last time. This place is tempting just for that alone. I don't know if this is harder to balance that. The Void Bomber only has 6 health, but it does 29 damage in a suicide explosion. Wow. These all do 12. Okay, so you don't want these to get anywhere near you, but they're easy to kill. Interesting. I don't know if we have anything great to take advantage of that with the, the spells we have chosen. And this map isn't great for lining up lightning bolts either. Actually, this is a pretty good one. 
I guess we could spawn here. Yeah, I, I like all these items. I'm kind of tempted by that. We don't have any dark spells, though. We'd have to, like, purchase one to take advantage of the, the thing. Um, this one increases max HP by 25, though. I mean, it has Ghost, Ghost Lair, Displacer Beast, Displacer Beast Lair, and Fire Lizards. The Ghost resists physical and poison, so I don't think we can use our guys against them. That we just the, the two upgrades we just got, the mushrooms and the the Earth Elemental, which I assumed is physical damage. And the other one did poison. We can definitely nuke them with our our lightning, though. It looks like Fire Lizards have a ranged attack. They resist fire and have negative ice resist. So yeah, I guess we want to diversify our schools so that we're not going to get caught by an enemy like that. Although, I'm getting the feeling that you could really just, so far, dump everything into like one spell school if you wanted and just not pick troublesome rifts. I wonder if you can force stuff like that. Which wouldn't be as interesting as having to build around what you can see. But I feel like you'd have to see like multiple floors in advance to be able to plan around that. In any like interesting way. Let's see, Displacer Beast. Each turn, 50% chance to blink to a random tile up to three tiles away. They randomly blink around and do damage. They have 10 health. They're all still within our lightning capacity. Oh, this is a lightning shield. Okay, resistance to lightning for 25 turns. Okay, so here are my thoughts. We don't have enchantment spells. We don't have dark spells. So this doesn't have a spell augmenter, circle upgrader, or any of that stuff. It gives us health, 50% health upgrade. We haven't spent any health yet, but these, uh, these floors are starting to look more dangerous. So I, I feel like that would be great. That gives us more value out of our healing potions, because now they heal up to 75 instead of up to 50. This one has ghosts, which I don't think we can take as much advantage of with all the summons we just got, but we can use them against the beasts and the lizards. And we can blast the ghosts with our lightning, I guess. We still have 17 charges of that. Did I say our beasts and our lizards? I meant our spore and our sentinels. I was reading this. Um, oh no, I was saying that we can use them against those, yeah. That's what I meant. And then we have... This one has a lot of cool items, some consumables that seem really nice. And two more health potions. This is one health potion, one mana potion. This is one mana potion. Those consumables seem really good. Maybe we pick up a dark spell on the next floor. We'll have three skill points, I assume. Can I filter? Oh, that's awesome. Good UI. Very cool. So I have like, there's a lot of spells we could take and then get, looks like free upgrades on it. Touch of death, come on. 200 damage, nine charges. That's cool. So yeah, maybe we'll, let's go here. We're gonna, we're kind of pigeonholing ourselves into taking a, sp a dark spell to take advantage of that altar. Now we don't have to do that. Um, we don't want to get caught by some kind of sunk cost fallacy or something. I guess that's not quite a, that's like the opposite of sunk cost, but some kind of logical fallacy here where we feel like we, we have to use this to get value out of that. Um, it, Cause it may not be the smartest thing to do, um, but I don't see why it wouldn't be a bad thing. Cause otherwise we're probably just going to end up upgrading another spell at this point or just saving it to get like an even better spell. So let's go here, get some sweet consumables and we're going to end up taking a dark spell. Um, what do the orcs do? Five physical damage, 20 HP. Okay, so I can't kill the orcs with my lightning bolt, or not with one of them. And what do we have? We have a couple of bomber layers that we're gonna to wanna to get to. Oh my God, they're all over the place. I think we really need to camp this out until we clear all the initial summons. Hmm. 
the hallway here. Like, I wonder if I can take these two out and then retreat somewhere. Ah, this is a lot of stuff, though. I can't spawn anywhere, like, in range of these. That's safely. Probably get some lightning bolt, uh, bolt value up here and take this out. I think I want to spawn here. We can clear these guys out and then peek out here, destroy these two, and then clean up everything else. I'm going to spawn on the healing potion. Does that pick it up? It did. Alright, I want to pop our Earth Sentinel down, and this guy's going to take a beating. How long does he last? 15 turns. So I guess I should have waited. Three by three square area. They're around there. Okay, I'm gonna back up because of that. Good thing I did. Wait, so did he he moved forward and blew up? Interesting. Oh, or did my earth elemental kill it? It might just blow up when they die. Now let's try dropping a spore somewhere. I wanna see what these do. Oh, let's drop it. What's the radius? Poison nearby units. Maybe we can... Oh, the bomber lair avoids poison. Okay, I'm gonna drop this here. Oh. Oh, these guys hurt themselves. That's interesting. So if I, like, zap these guys, I might kill the orc or do damage to it at least. What happens if I drop a spore? Oh, I can't reach those guys. He's gonna kind of do his own thing. Alright, I'm gonna get into our corridor here. I'm gonna lightning bolt these guys. Actually, hold up. This guy does 29 damage. What if I just drop a Toxic Spore? All right, check this out. This might be risky. Actually, this is risky. I don't even need to use the Toxic Spore, so I was gonna try and blow this guy up to kill him, but I can do that Lightning Bolt anyways. All right, now these guys are grouping up nicely. Uh-oh. I think I only have to kill one of these. Like, what happens if I drop this here? Yeah, they all die. Oh, they damage their lair. Sweet. Cool, I can kill the lair with this right from here. Excellent. This is going better than I expected. Can't quite hit that from here. Drop a sentinel next to it, but I only have six charges. I don't really want to waste that. I feel like I can deal with the rest of this with spores and lightning bolts. I need to do this. Can't quite hit that. Alright, well, I need to destroy all these guys. Oh, this one survived. I guess he moved or something. Oh shoot, I don't let this guy get adjacent to me. Uh, I guess we're gonna take damage. I was trying to set up a juicy uh, hit on this stuff. this. Ow. 
Ouch. It's too bad. Can I hit this thing? Not quite. All right, two layers down. Oh my god, there's three of them left. Maybe these guys will, like group up. I guess I get max value out of our mana potion. I don't want to just like use all my lightning bolts and then have these, but not really be able to use them effectively. So we got to kind of like balance our charges on all of our spells to maximize our value there, I think. Oh man. Too bad I can't blow this thing up. We can definitely take advantage of um, the stuff that these guys are summoned to destroy these things. I do this. Sweet. Ah, oh, damn, that didn't work out. I wanted to snipe both of these guys. This is not going to happen anymore. Drop a spore here. Okay, this is going to summon in two turns. Because it doesn't matter if they summons. I can just do this and kill all of them. Actually, I can do it with a spore. Ah, I don't have the range. Okay. Drop a spore here. And I guess I've been kind of ignoring the consumables, but we could like pick this up and upgrade something mid-run or mid-round. Oh, did that blow these up? The walls? It did. Interesting. Oh, can I shoot through this? Huh. Alright, check this out. Oh, this thing's going to ruin my plans. If I do this, I think I kill the lair by hitting it with direct lightning bolt damage and the explosion damage from this. I might want to do... Uh, shoot, I'm going to screw this up. Let's just do that. Alright, now i got to deal with this. I have more lightning bolt charges than spore, so yeah, let's just take this out of the lightning bolt. I could have waited till it generated a bomb and then popped it with a spore, but we'll try and take advantage of our uh, charges there. So the sentinel wasn't great on that floor, I don't think. Was it? I don't know. Since it's immobile, it's not as good as I thought it might be. It seems like we might have to walk around more than I expected. Well, you know why? It's because those units were so weak that I didn't need like a heavy hitter sentinel kind of patrolling, like giving me crowd control on one area. It'll probably be better in other scenarios and other maps. All right, let's uh, auto pick up. Cool. Hold up. There's only two portals here. Are there always only two portals? Interesting. Alright, I got three spell points. 
get the death dice, two golden stopwatches, two mana potions, four healing potions, teleporter, portal disruptor. We, we got some resources here. I'm, I'm excited. None of your spells can be improved. Oh, you have to buy a spell first. Increase charges and minion damage. Oh, minion damage. Actually, I assume it only gives us one of those options. Maybe? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Alright, so we're looking at... It's dark, right? Yeah. Oops. I guess dark is like necromancy, if they're so focused on minions at that shrine. Yeah, there's no other like necromancy thing. We got a touch of death, right? That sounds so cool. Is that a trap spell? It's only range one. I wonder if there's like a skill that can make us like extend the range of that. You can upgrade arcane damage, fire damage, physical damage, and raise vampire. What? Oh, hold up. This gives us access to upgrades that we normally can't increase, maybe? Or maybe those are universal. I don't have to go for like the big spells, but I want to. What are the weak ones? Most of these are level three. Poison units. Hollow Flesh. Afflict target group of living units with Hollow Flesh. Affected units become undead and are no longer living. Gain Holy Vulnerability. Gain Dark Immunity. Lose a portion of their max health and cannot be healed. That's pretty interesting. That way you can use that like Angel's Choir thing more effectively. But I don't like the idea of having to use two spells to do one thing. Unless that one thing from like the other spells is like, amazing, but... Because um, that's like two actions, two charges, more skill points. So I don't know how good this might be in practice. Uh, my intuition says not to fall into that. I was about to call it a trap, but I don't want to say that without knowing. Um, let's see. None of the ball spells really jumped out to me. We were reading those before. Darkness blinds all units on the map except demons and undead each turn for the duration. I wonder what blindness does. Seems like everything just like comes to you. Do they walk around randomly? That'd actually be kind of good. But not with our lightning bolt, but good in general. Create space, kind of crowd control. I think we want something that does damage at this point though, or something similar to damage. Deals arcane or dark damage. Yep, here we are. To each uh, nearby enemy each turn. Radius of seven, 30 duration, only two damage. I assume that's around me. Eh, I'm not into that. Pain mirror, reflect all damage dealt to you as dark damage to all enemies in line of sight. But we have to take damage to take advantage of that? I don't like the sound of that. Well, it says reflect. But there's no way that gives us damage immunity for 10 turns. And then hurts everything in line of sight. Yeah. Um... I could see, so this is kind of powerful where you take some damage and then kill like everything line of sight. I could see that being an interesting way to play. Use your health as a really strong resource in that way. Only five charges though. Plague of Filth. And this is Conjuration as well. Although Conjuration doesn't matter if we don't have that altar, even though we've built into it. In fact, we probably want to build into other things to have more versatility. It summons fly swarms and giant toads at the target location. The toads have double the hit points and damage of the flies. Seal fate um, deals dark damage to one target after the duration expires. Duration four. 160 damage. Range eight. So you hit it on something at the wait a few turns. You kind of have to use it at max range. Why is it requires line of sight and upgrade? Oh, it says requires LOS 1. 
What does that mean? It's one of the stats there. Maybe that means it doesn't require line of sight anymore. That would be kind of cool. Like use it around a barrier where they can't actually walk towards you in that duration. Um, suspend mortality, upgrade lives. Target ally temporarily gains the ability to reincarnate on death. I wonder if that in increases their duration. Probably not. That could be pretty cool though. Mixed with the conjuration stuff. And then the touch of death. So I'm leaning towards uh, skill fate and touch of death here after reading through all those actually. Maybe ghost ball was what I was looking for. Oh wait, no, that's the uh, the ghost one. That summons all the ghosts. Okay, that wasn't like the, the flaming sphere thing or whatever. <clears throat> oh, the decisions. Seal Fate does almost as much damage. This can raise a vampire too, which seems cool. Two for one. Spreads is an upgrade on the Seal Fate. So you can seal the fate of multiple enemies. That might be the... What changes our mind here? And this has max charges and minion damage. Probably end up taking charges on whatever we do. Charges seem very valuable. Unless mana potions are just like super common. Because every time we take a new spell or upgrade the charges, it increases the value of one mana potion a lot. And we've only used one mana potion. That was on the first floor. We're probably going to need to use one on the next floor no matter what. So we got like through two floors without using a mana potion now. I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how that works. But maybe charges aren't quite as important as we think they are. Now for minion damage, we can upgrade Touch of Death to raise vampires, and then I assume our minions will do more damage, or the vampire will do more damage. Interesting. I do wonder how good the vampire is. That has 9 charges, Seal Fate has 13. Touch of death is just like so cool. We're going for it. Let's upgrade that thing. Oh, we can only give it max charges. We're not allowed to uh, do the minion thing. I, may, I wonder if it would let us do the minion thing if we were able to upgrade the vampires. The three more charges. It's from nine to 12, that's not amazing. Or it went from six to nine, okay. No, it went from 9 to 12, so it was a, like a one-third increase. Mm, I don't know if that was really worth, like like we were talking about before, taking a, a dark spell. Maybe there was something better we could have taken. Although, this seems cool. I think we're going to have fun with it. All right, well, that was a... We've talked a lot here. We've, like, really analyzed things and, you know, kind of really slowly played through this, but um, this video is getting a little long, so let's call it here, and then we'll continue this run soon with another video. But yeah, I think this is a good break point. I don't want this to be too long. And I think this game will pick up now that we're kind of learning how to play things, learning how our skills work on these maps to, to get through them and kill enemies. So like we'll be able to play faster, and I'm really excited to see where this run goes and um, what our overall impression of this game is gonna be. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I'll catch you all next time.